not what you've done, not what you didn't do, not what you were told, but someplace, someplace, I know it's true, I know it's true for you because I know it's true for me. Someplace in there when it's real quiet at night and when nobody's looking and when you allow yourself to have a good thought, you have that thought of, wow, I'm really good. I'm really okay. But when we've been away from home too long, that looks like, I don't care what they think about me. When we've been away from home too long, it's like, oh, I don't want them to think this about me. When we've been away from home too long, we don't care or we shy away from. But when it's time for us to go home, we remember who we are. You see, in you, there's a divine spark that knows exactly who you are. You have to know it. But it means that you have to be in touch with the spark. You can't just let it burn until it simmers and goes out. It's time for us to go home. Home, home, home is that place where our purpose lives. Each one of us has a purpose. Each one of us has a purpose. But I can't find my purpose a young one. Yeah, you can. If you stop thinking that your purpose has to bring you money, you'll find it. If, if you stop thinking that people are going to be upset with you, if you really truly stand all the way up in your grandness and your glory, you'll do it. And if you stop terrorizing yourself about how badly you're going to fail and how stupid you're going to look, oh, you will find your purpose. Because your purpose gave birth to you. Within you, there's a purpose. And when you find that purpose, you know you're on your way. When you find that purpose, you know that you're in relationship with your creator. You, you see, home is the place where your purpose grows, not for your benefit, but for the benefit of the world. You see, when you're firmly sitting at home and you're firmly in alignment with your purpose, doing what you need to do, your first thought is not, how am I going to pay the bills? Your first thought is, what will happen if I don't? do my purpose in the world. Your purpose gave birth to you. You know what it is. It's in there. And you got to know that you know it. And if you don't think you know it, make it up. <laughs> Just make up something. You made up everything else. You made up that you were lonely and unworthy, unloved and unlovable. So now make this up. My purpose is to stand as a demonstration of the glory of God with such strength and stamina that I give people permission to heal in my presence. <laughs> my, my purpose is, is to bake the cookie, write the book, open the school, whatever, whatever, whatever. Make it up, make it up, make it up. Just make it up and go on to that. We've got to go home. You see, home is where the vision is. There's a vision in you. There's a vision of you. There's a vision of loveliness, a vision of grandeur, a vision of peace, a vision of joy, a vision of love. There's a vision in you. I know there's a vision in you. Otherwise, all of us would have on glasses, and we don't. So it means we can't see, but we must learn how to see instead of looking. You see, this is seeing. And this is looking. And we've been looking when we should be seeing. Moving the vision from the inside out. What's your vision? Your vision is in your home. The home in your heart. It's in your relationship. What is it that you see for the world? What is it that you see for yourself? What is it that you see for others? What is your vision? But the reason that many of us don't go home to our purpose and our vision is because we're still stuck in the story and the history that was given to us. We gotta go home. I wish I could tell you some of the most horrible stories that I've been told about myself, and I'm sure you could probably horrify me and yourself with the ones that you've heard. Okay? Why don't we remember that? Isn't that funny? The human, the human mind remembers the most horrible and negative thing. I don't, of all, you know? 
and, and, and we seem to overlook and override the positive that's available everywhere. So you're walking down the street and you fall, and you say, oh my God, I fell, and I broke my, uh, my wrist, and, uh, and uh, you know, scarred my face, and the people kept walking by, and they didn't even stop to help me, and I was just standing out there, my skirt was up over my dress, and I was trying to pull it down, so uh, I, my pants, and, and so nobody could see my panties, and I just laid there, and then when I got to the hospital, I had to lay in the emergency room for seven hours, because other people were dying, and nobody would come to see about me, they didn't think that my wounds were as bad. You know what I said to that? Yeah, but your nails still look good. <laughs> In other words, find something that keeps you connected to the vision. <laughs> At all times, okay, so your lip busted, but that's all right, your nails are looking good. <laughs> We lose our vision because we stay focused in and on the things that terrorize us. And, and, and we like to tell those terrorizing stories. And, and you know, sometimes we invite people over. <laughs> Why don't you come over for dinner? Now this is the part we don't say, because I'm going to tell you a terrorizing story. <laughs> but think about how horrible my week has been. I'm going to cook, why don't you come on over? <laughs> or worse yet, we don't say anything at all. Many of us can't get home because the way to home is blocked by all of the words we've never spoken, the hurts we've never voiced, the angers we've never verbalized. Uh, we can't get to the doorway to home because we're spiritually constipated by the things we have yet to say, about the times when we didn't stand up for ourselves. You know, I, I work with a lot of people, and there's a little phenomenon that I've been noticing going on as people do their work to try to get home. And that's that they're confronted and faced with circumstances and situations today that triggers something that they lived a long time ago. And it reminds them of, oh, this reminds me when my mother, or this reminds me when my father, or, or this reminds me when so-and-so did such and such. And I say to them, well, how old were you then? And they say, fine. How old are you? 42 now. <laughs> but you know, when there's a psychological wounding, when there's a psychological wounding, we get stuck in that place. But in order for us to get home, we have to realize that I had to stay when I was five. I don't have to stay now. I had to take it when I was seven, but I don't have to take it now. I had to turn the other cheek when I was nine, when they were feeding me, clothing me, housing me. But now I'm 35, 39, 42, 54, 67. I don't have to put up with this no more. How about that? Because I want to stay in the division. And the only way that I'm truly going Turn home to the truth of who I am, to my authentic identity, to the growing, living, learning, loving of my purpose, to the vision that I have of myself, for myself, and the vision that God has for me is to have the courage to speak the truth. Your truth will set you free.